Today's episode of Patroma Therapy is coming to you from downtown Dallas, Texas. On our thumbnail, you will see a big bank building with a green tree in front of it and a yellow stoplight. How are you today? I'm okay. Is that the uh, standard answer to the how are you question that always confuses me? Should I just tell you about mind-blowing experience I've just had or or should I say just okay and uh, be done with it? Anyway, thank you very much for starting this episode. I'm very glad to hear that bell ringing kind of makes me feel like a Pavlov's dog with reflex <laughs> starts working. I start thinking what I'm going to talk about and uh, what am I going to do and stuff like that. But then again, I thought, like, we're two crazies talking to each other. No one cares. But then again, therapy is for crazies. And we're all crazy. It's just a matter of degree. And that also, last but that... not least, last but not least, uh, damn, I just, I had it and, it, and I don't anymore. The, the thought gone, I don't know how that happened. I was going to say something, but then when I was almost ready to say it, I didn't know what I was going to say about Well, you know, in therapy, <clears throat> when you hit a block like that, whatever's <laughs> just on the other side of it is really important. So I'm going to let you, like, retrieve that very meaningful moment for a minute. And I'm just going to say, when I think of look up, there are different meanings to that expression. If you're in the, back in the old days, people used to go to libraries. You know, if you want to look up something, you go to the library and you find a book, you read the Encyclopedia Britannica, you know, you, you talk to the librarian and you say, I need to look up something about the planets because I'm doing a report at school about the planets. And then the librarian walks over and goes to the card catalog and finds what section the planets are in. And then you walk over and you you know, go through the books. But nowadays, in the year 2023, when we say look up, we look up something, many people just go to Google, like, we're going to Google it. Let's, let's Google this. Let's Google that. Let's, let's Google this. So to look up, uh, you know, as a person who spends time with books, you know, if I want to look up something, I find a real book that's laying around here, a lot of books. Or I go what to if Google. Tomorrow, what, if, what if tomorrow there is no Google anymore and we wouldn't be able to look up or to Google what happens to Google? Well, of course you'll be able to look up stuff. You know, you're not a tabula rasa. You're not a blank slate. You know, anybody who's five years old has stuff in their brain. You just look through your own memories. Like you, if I said, let's talk about the planets, you don't need to Google it. You can just like start jabbering about it, you know? You know, it's 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 it'll be okay. I mean, I mean, another way to use the expression "look up" is like, well, cheer up, old boy. You know, the things are going to be looking up soon. So let's suppose I'm a therapist, and you come in to talk, sit in a chair and talk about all the various little things going on in your life, large and small. And you you look at me and you go, well, you know, how do you think I'm doing? And I'd say, well, you know, look up. You know, let's, let's just look on the bright side. You know, you came uh -huh. to therapy, really appreciate you paying me, and, you know, you made my day. And so I think things are looking up for both of us. Uh, your session is over, time to leave. Because traditionally in Freudian and Jungian, and, uh, you know, the, the, it's called the 55-minute hour. So you book an hour of therapy. But you got to get settled, which takes five minutes, and then you have to leave, which takes five minutes. And then you have to forget something, which takes five minutes. So the therapist makes pretty good money just for sitting there and saying, aha, uh -huh. how did that make you feel? Interesting. <laughs> you want to talk about that? Yeah, I know. I would have made a great therapist. Hey, you say look up, and I immediately thought of that movie I told you about, um, my, one of my favorites. I think from 2022, 2021, don't remember. It's a subtle satire uh, I, that was supposed to be a fun, uh, and it did. It was fun. I don't know. You didn't look it. You didn't see it, probably. But uh, if what is you it? ever What's come across it, I do. Can, 
Wait a minute, can you Don't give look us a clue? Oh yeah, it's got Donald Sutherland in it. Doesn't it have Donald Yeah, Donald you, you probably googled it, but I'm not sure no, if I you didn't. had a chance I to didn't Google. Google it. I didn't Google it. You're always accusing me of Googling it. You have the Google addiction. I have the memory and books. You do. <laughs> is that called <laughs> gaslighting? Explain to me, what is gaslighting and what is ghosting? What is gaslighting? I, I never... It's 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 like the other day I said significant other and you were surprised where I how I came up with that word and you said that before the internet it didn't exist I don't know but uh, these two gaslighting and uh, what's the second one um, ghosting ghosting someone ghosting. yeah I think they they come from MGT MGTOW does that make any sense. Tao, no. community, men goes their own way. No, 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 our listeners what those initials stand for just a little bit slower everything's fine but you just got to slow down well it's like MAGA make America great again it's an abbreviation for men going their own way I guess and uh, they well, were very popular was... oh, go ahead they were very popular five or six years ago and that's their teaching was basically how to be successful it's not a pickup artistry it's I don't know how to describe it but gaslighting I think, damn, I, I forgot about the second one again. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. we have to stay on MG, I thought it was something, uh, I thought it was MGT. Oh, okay. Let's call it Mktao. Mktao. Okay, what was the general idea behind it? Like, fill our subscribers in on what's the general idea that men can get along without, I thought it was about men getting along without women. Uh, how is that possible? I don't know. You were the one that was talking about it. Oh, I never said that. <laughs> it stands for it. You came no, up. No, we it. were ta we were talking about, a couple of years ago. We were talking about men going away on retreats and men going out away into the woods with drums and campfires and men building fires and just getting away from oh. their wife or their girlfriend or their family and their job and they just just want to get away. And like the main person they want to get away from is like their wife. And so the men go out into the woods and like chop trees and and like sleep in tents and they're they're with their their brothers, their their man brothers. Don't you remember that? No, I mean uh now when you were saying it, I I think we've covered this yes two years or three years ago, maybe even before that. But you forgot but, it. That's uh, how important it was. Really? <laughs> Oh, uh, I honestly, okay. I I had no idea what um, Tao was at the time. Well, maybe I still don't, but I liked them. Many interesting thoughts and teachings and books came from that movement. Uh, I don't remember any, but uh, of course I can Google it or look up as we uh, just discussed. But uh, why are you so interested in Tao? What? Why are you so interested? Is it? In, I'm not in, interested in. You're the one that brought it up, but, and I just said, could you slow down and tell our readers what our subscribers what it is? So let's just move right along. So <laughs> the cover <laughs> shot is, uh, or the thumbnail is downtown Dallas, and there's a lot of really tall buildings. And I actually took this shot in a moving car. Now some people think that I'm a I'm a kind of a dangerous person. Because like I'm driving and I'll just all of a sudden just <laughs> stick my hand out the window and take a picture. And like <laughs> then I, I then I paused at a stoplight once and a guy in a truck, he said, hey, you got to be careful. What if you drop your what if you drop your <laughs> camera? I said, well, I don't want to talk to you. And then I <laughs> just rolled my window. <laughs> no, the thing is, That's you know, fun. actually, if. I, I just see an interesting shot because usually when I'm driving around, like my mind is always framing pictures. Like it's it's really like I like photography and I, I collect pictures and I, I love pictures and books and things. And so I, I'm just thinking of some 
you know, beautiful buildings in Manhattan, beautiful buildings in Portland, beautiful buildings in, you know, Rome and Moscow and, you know, just beautiful old churches. So when I'm driving around, if I just see something, I think, oh, my God, I have to take a picture of this, but I'm driving. How can I do this? If I take the picture through the windshield, it's going to have like smudges on it. So I just like kind of wipe the phone down and grab it really hard and we just put it out the window. So that picture I took, with, I just, I took it yesterday. I just flung my hand out the window and, you know, took two shots. Uh, well, not, not liquor, but like t- I took two photographs and then I pulled up to the next light and the, the, the fellow was being very nice. You know, he was being nice saying, you know, you need to be careful. And basically I told him like, just, I just kind of like saying, I just kind of like blasted him. I go, I don't want to talk about it. And, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you do. You did look probably like some kind of. Uh, um, I don't want to use Crazy any harsh person. words, but uh, hired gun who just stops the traffic light, shoots two times, and then far <laughs> get away. Yeah, listen, I didn't get any chance to tell you about what gaslighting and ghosting is because you needed to know. Okay, okay let's go right? slowly and do the first one: gaslighting. Yeah. Well, I, I am surprised that you remember these words because we've talked about that like many years ago. But gaslighting is manipulation, right? That I'm doing something, but I'm making you think that you're doing it. How does that sound? Sounds like you're gaslighting me. So, <laughs> yeah. So, what could be an example? Let's suppose there's two people that are getting into a little disagreement. And the woman remembers the situation this way, and then the man resim- remembers the situation this way. Suppose there's two people just sitting at a co- you know, coffee shop, and they're just, you know, making small talk, you know, and somebody says, you know, I can't believe it when you did this. And the guy goes, what do you mean I did this? You're the one that did that. Is that gaslighting? You blame it on the uh, other person? I don't know. Uh, well, can you give us an example? What is an example? What? Uh, it's like you bought a car or an apartment or a house, and then you think that wasn't prudent because you had to take mortgage and uh, take a loan. But then your significant other, quote unquote, was says like, uh, "But but you wanted it, uh, and you instead of saying, yeah, I have made a mistake,' you're saying, no, you oh, wanted yeah, it.' Oh yeah, that, yeah. So it's a, def- it's a yeah, it's a defense mechanism, which would be call- in Freudian terms, it would be called reaction formation so so oh. the modern terminology is gaslighting but the psychological term is called reaction formation you take the oh. information that somebody gave you and you like put it back on them so you can defend your own vulnerability yeah How actually that, the rhetoric that, I, that makes me feel like an idiot because the, the rhetoric <laughs> some people some people are very skilled at rhetorics and you cannot talk to them rationally because you will be always losing. I actually admire such people. I don't know, maybe it's just in their genes. Maybe they learned that skill somewhere. But you're you always mean, losing. Yes, you know, um, there, there uh, are people that are gifted in speaking and in arguing and manipulating, and they are called lawyers. So um, not necessarily, that, but yeah. Because no, I'm, that's just, I'm just talking about gifted, gifted speakers. Uh, like back oh. in the time of ancient Greece, um, the philosophers, like before Socrates, they were called the pre-Socratic philosophers, and they just wandered around, and uh, they were itinerant for philosophers. So they just wandering around. Anybody that liked what they were talking about would subscribe. By subscribe, I mean they would like follow them, and then the the person just sat down on a rock, and then someone would say, "Well, whoa, man, he needs some food, so let's go get him some food." And then someone would say, "Well, let's move on to the next town. Okay, well, maybe we could all sleep at this place." So the wandering philosophers are part of the the the, the tradition of philosophy, and you know that's kind of what we're doing with patroma therapy when we say, "Hey, do you want to subscribe?" Would you like to subscribe? Would you like to just wander with us through the world and like come up with ideas and laugh and talk about quotes? And I'm not really sure where this uh, sentence is going to end. So what's the next term? Ghosting? Yeah. It's strange how our topics change from look up to gaslighting and ghosting and tao. But anyway, I ghosting is a 
I, I think it's ending any communication. For instance, if you and me were talking, uh, we've been talking for a month and tomorrow I just disappear. Also, we've been on good terms and I say goodbye to each other. But I just disappear into nothingness. That's called ghosting. How does that like? Yeah, our, 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 I think, you know, most of us have cell phones and, you know, we might meet somebody in a coffee shop. We might meet somebody at a museum. We might meet somebody in an elevator. I mean, yesterday I was on my way to eat lunch and I stopped to uh, get some gas and I saw a guy wearing these, these shoes called Crocs. And I was saying, wow, those are Crocs. And he goes, yeah. He said, do you like them? I said, yeah. I said, I was at once up in Manhattan in Washington Square Park, and I saw somebody coming across Washington Square Park wearing orange Crocs, a white outfit, and he had or kind of orange red hair. And I thought, my God, it looks like Mario Batali, the, the TV personality who's a cook. And lo and behold, it was Mario Batali. And then the guy, this was yesterday, I go, he goes, I can't believe you know about New York. He goes, I'm from New York. I go, really? I said, I, I, I visited New York a lot. I go, what are you doing in Dallas? He said, well, I, I've moved here and uh, my daughter is a young musician and she wants to go to music composition school and they have a gifted and talented program here in Dallas at Booker T. Washington High School. And I go, oh, well, you know, I help people get into medical school and law school and whatnot. So anyhow, we just made this small talk about, about nothing, about everything. And it was just such a synchronistic moment to come across this fellow. And so, so I, I said, well, you know, if, if you and your wife and your daughter would like to meet up for coffee, I'll, I'll be happy to share with you some knowledge I have. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm in Dallas and, you know, we exchanged phone numbers and, you know, I agreed to you know meet, meet up with him and his wife, but let's suppose he, you know, he texted back, you know, hello, this is John. And I texted back, oh, hello, you know, nice to meet you. Uh, congratulations on having a gifted young daughter. And suppose we exchanged texts for a week, like, oh, you know, would y'all like to get together? And he goes, well, this isn't a good weekend. Then I text back again, well, how about this? So in this little exchange, suppose <clears throat> suppose we, uh, you know, t you know, tit for tat, back and forth two, three times. And so I'm kind of expecting that he's gonna set up an appointment and bring his wife and his daughter. Then suppose he just disappears from my phone. That would be ghosting. And I'm just left wondering like, well, does he not wanna meet up or, you know, what, what happened? It's, it leaves the person on the other end wondering. And that would be an example of ghosting. So- that um be. Yeah, if it's going to feel like ghosting, if he doesn't call me back, I'm going to track him down. No, no, ghosting, yeah, ghosting in the modern times uh, is when someone disappears from uh, texting with uh, no warning. Yeah, but and you he, mentioned not to change the subject, but uh, can I can I say something or or sure, please feel free to go on if you need to. No, I'm good. I'm going to drink water. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay. No, you mentioned the crocodile shoes, and I thought, uh, as we discussed already, that shoes are a very important part of man's uh, outlook, look out. Okay, you understand. So I thought that there are, I don't know how many footwear archetypes, like Carl Gustav Jung, you know, he came up with this idea of archetypes, and I thought, what if we apply the two men's shoes? So the person who wears crocodile shoes would probably belong to, because crocodile, they are dress shoes, right? Not the exercise, not the casual, not the season. No, no, no. Dress yeah, shoe. croc crocodile shoes are like really high end, like some musicians who are really, really, really good. If they got crocodile boots or like snakeskin boots, like mm -hmm. it. It's part of it's it's like high end crocodile snake skin. But is it yeah. is it dress shoes or or, or just a case? No, no. The skin. If you're a musician and you're going out to play a gig and you're playing at a, you know, if you're, you know, it depends on where you're going to wear the shoes. So like I I went to lunch yesterday at this German restaurant and 
Well, while I was waiting to sit down, I saw this fellow come in, an older fellow with a beautiful shirt. Oh, it was a fabulous shirt. And he had on uh, shoes that were moccasins, which means you slip, you slip them on, but they were blue, not blue suede, but blue sparkle, like beautiful sparkle. He must have been in the design industry or some kind of very high end something. So I just saw him entering a restaurant by himself and I immediately looked at his shoes. And, uh, you know, sometimes shoes are ju are classified by the material they're, they're made from. But when he got dressed, he wasn't thinking, let me get my dress up shoes on. He probably works in the design, design district. He might be a designer. So he's just getting ready to go to work, but we would never call those work shoes. Yeah, well, well, because men love shoes. I don't know about other men, but I love shoes. Um, and shoes, they're more just than just stuff between you and the ground. So I, I they make me comfortable. And um, how does men's shoes make you feel? I, I like, <laughs> I, I'm going to choose not to say what I really think, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about men's shoes. I always <laughs> judge men by their shoes. <laughs> like, I don't look at the car because guys can always rent different cars. Like, if you see somebody, you know, and I never really look at a guy's wallet because, you know, he could have just borrowed the money. And I sometimes look at the watch that they're wearing, but I, I always look at the shoes. So, like, there's some very beautiful work, work boots, and there's some very beautiful snakeskin boots, and there's some very beautiful, oh, like, driving moccasins. Like, I love driving moccasins. Any guy who is wearing driving moccasins, I think, okay, this is someone I can have a relationship with. So, so I often judge, uh, you know. I love I, I love work boots and combat boots. They are my favorite. Don't I understand they are not to be worn daily, but uh, they actually do their job of being waterproof, snowproof, foolproof, and I don't know how much durable. I love everything but, that's durable. But are are they women proof? Are they, are they women proof? Uh, are they, they are repellent. Yeah. Women repellent. Women hate baggy baggy. Uh, uh, what do, what do they call it? Uh, the battle jeans, not the battle jeans. Baggy pants. Cargo. I don't know. Car how do you cargo call it? pants. Cargo, cargo pants, has exactly. Cargo, cargo pants, camouflage, and battle shoes is a woman repellent. I don't know why. Oh my. I really love them. Well, I remember so once. I, I think, yeah, ahead. go ahead and tell me some more about. So, I like cargo pants because they have all the pockets, and you, you know, you can put all kinds of gear in them. And uh, yeah, my yeah, favorite right. is Five Eleven. It's a U.S. made. I don't know if you ever came across Five Eleven cargo pants. Uh, you you know this make five eleven? Uh, well, we would say brand. Do you know this brand? brand. But I'm I'm not. Uh -huh. I think you mentioned it once before because <clears throat> somebody I know was going to get some some um, you know some hiking gear. I I also went into this one store. It's called Whole Earth Provisions, and this was before the pandemic. And the only thing I wanted was some socks. I wanted either 100% cotton or 100% wool. I don't want any blend. I don't want any mix. I know what I want. I want 100% cotton, not too much elastic. So I walk in and I was with a girlfriend and she was puttering around looking at some other stuff. She does yoga and she was going to go to try to climb Mount, um, what's in Nepal, the Himalayas, Nepal. Anyhow, she was retiring from teacher teaching and People were going to give her a trip and she was going to go to Nepal. So she's off, you know, looking at like real stuff. And I'm, I just want to buy socks. So this young man comes up to me. He goes, may I help you? And I'm thinking, you know, probably not, but let me try. You can try. I go, I need socks. He goes, what do you want them to do? I said, this is a store that has so, it has beautiful socks, beautiful shoes. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like beautiful things to climb mountains with like they've got so much gear in there it's like a gear paradise you know, whole earth provisions on mockingbird lane he goes well, what do you want them to do i said i want them to cover my feet and i want to put my feet in a shoe he goes you know we have a lot of variety i mean are you going to go trekking are you going to be doing uh, mountain climbing are you are you planning on jogging you know are you going to use this for soccer i go do i look like a soccer player 
He goes, well, you know, we, we want you to be satisfied. I said, I just want, to, I just want some socks. He goes, well, let me show you some over here. And he goes to this fabulous display with beautiful design and all this graphic art on them. I go, well, those are real pretty, but like the ankles are gonna be too tight and they're not 100% cotton. He goes, now tell me again what you want them to do. I said, I wanna cover my feet, I'm gonna put them in a shoe. I might go dancing a little bit and I, uh, I might go for a short walk near White Rock Lake. He goes, okay, well, dancing and walking are different. He was not bullshitting me. He was, he was trying no, no, to help it's similar. It's similar to the situation when I was trying to buy pistachio or peanuts. Very much the same. Yeah, how, how so? Like, explain it to me, because I'm like, I'm running. Because you have so many, I mean, he offered you so many choices that you cannot decide or he cannot understand what you're going to do with your socks. I mean, a simple question, I need socks. Can you, can you, can I buy socks here? And he starts to ask questions, what are you going to do with them? Like he's been stupid or what? What are we going to do with socks? No, but the thing but is, then again, very... he's not, he's not stupid. Yeah. I understand his idea because one, one socks are perfect for winter weather or for uh, hiking and another just sitting for, for sitting in the I mean, office. I understand that, but. Uh... No, I mean, my friend that was with me is, is kind of, she's sort of built like a hummingbird. She's a vegetarian, very thin, very healthy. She does yoga. She does meditation. She's hiked in the redwood forest. She's done scuba diving. Like, even though she's a little bit older, she, she has a very athletic uh, lifestyle. And then I'm her friend. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, my my exercise is driving my car around White Rock Lake and taking pictures of birds or <laughs> driving through downtown and like sticking my hand out the window and taking pictures of buildings. You know, I'm like, I like to go dancing and you know, I like to sit at, sit in an outside bar and just watch people go by. But we have different, you know, body types. We have different, different lifestyles. But I thought it was really humorous that he thought that that maybe I would go like rock climbing. But I guess, you know, people of all different ages come in there and do all this. And so I said, you know, I think I'm just going to browse around. So he went yeah, off you to should go have, find you should, have, you should have told him that you are a freelance photographer and you, as well as the hiking, you spend in time, uh, a lot of time on your feet, right? <laughs> Really, really, I don't. I spend a lot of time sitting. No, but you know, you know. No, you I'm gonna. Could, that's you, a good could have, you could buy seven pairs or ten pairs. Yeah. And, yes, uh, yes. and they'll keep you in socks for life. Well, that's one of the famous things, you know. Uh, at Christmas time, uh, you know, some people hang up a stocking, and then you have some gifts under the tree. Then you open them, the gifts. But, you know, in my family, we have all, as I was raising my children, we've always really loved the stocking that you hang up. So we would sometimes buy each other little chocolates or horseradish or sardines or we, we put in the, we put, or like marzipan, like we put into each other's stocking things we really, really like. And yeah, but I remember, isn't that called, don't mean to interrupt, but isn't that called hoarding? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Oh, Christmas. So yeah, for Christmas is talking. No, I misunderstood. No, no. But but what I, what I mean is that both of uh, my daughters and a, a few a few other people in my family know I love socks. So it's always a challenge to try to figure out where are we going to get socks, you know, from mom, because I have very specific. I have like a, a high arch, a really high arch. And... Uh, so like my daughters are always trying to like go on the internet. They they go to Zappos. They go everywhere. They go all over the place trying to find socks that will work. It must be either 100% cotton. They must be 100 or 100% wool. Or so so anyhow, this the the whole idea of like trying to find socks, you know, is is actually a <laughs> something that that's real. Like or let me switch back to shoes. When you yeah, go no, 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 no. Let, let's get back. Before we switch back to shoes, I was, uh, we talked about um, that, uh, oh God, cargo pants, remember? So I was yes, going to say that yes. there are plenty of cargo pants, cargo pants for a woman. You love it once you bought it, right? You'd appreciate, you, saw, you, you, you said it called brand. You'd appreciate 5.11 brand if you ever decide to buy it. Not that I'm selling them, they sell themselves, but. Yes, okay, we're not. 
we do not sponsor any products. We are also not therapists. We're not, we are, we claim no uh, guaranteed results from listening to this program, but, but we appreciate you subscribing and listening. Actually, cargo pants once saved my life. Have I ever told you that story? Uh, no, no, you have not. Can you, can you tell that now? Okay. Well, I, uh, that sounds terrible. It is. Yeah, it is too. It is? Okay. <laughs> No, it's a great story. Sure. Uh, it's mm -hmm. true. So uh, ar around the end of October, all of November and December, uh, people have money, people are buying gifts, they put gifts in their car, they're going shopping. So there's a lot of robberies on the parking lots and a lot of purse snatching. So let's suppose, suppose a woman has a shoulder strap bag a guy can come by with a razor and just cut the shoulder strap and run. So there's a lot of thieving going on, thieving and thugging. So when I was living back in Houston, I was just going up to a little, oh, just a little small store to, I don't know what I was gonna get, you know, some tape or some wrapping Christmas presents. You know, I need some more tape and I, I needed some more tissue paper. And I don't know what. So I get out of my car and there's several columns in front of the store. And, you know, I see this guy kind of lurking behind a column and I'm thinking, yeah, this is not good. And I just had a feeling like I'm just going to get out of my car and go in, go in to this little store. But I had a bad feeling about what was going to happen. So I was wearing some cargo pants and like a hoodie something like a hoodie it was kind of winterish time but yeah i didn't need a coat and i thought let me just put five dollars in my uh, like if you put five dollars on your right hip like not in the pocket of your hip but down lower i just put a five dollar bill down there i don't even know why i did it <clears throat> so i get out of my car and this guy Sometimes they have a little card in front of them that says, you know, I, I cannot speak. I'm mute. You know, I, you know, I, I am, they're, they're like a beggar. They're trying to get money from you. And they'll have this little card and they'll maybe have some candy bars and they're trying to get you to give you money for the candy bars. So a lot of very gullible people will pause, they'll stop and they'll think, oh, this poor man can't even speak and it's Christmas time. Well, let me open my purse and give him some money. That gives him the time just to take the purse and run. So in the shopping center, there are some signs up that says, you know, you know, watch your car, watch your possessions. You know, the management is not responsible for what happens in the parking lot. You know, be vigilant. You know, th this is this is Christmas in America. So so I'm getting out of the car and this guy's behind a, a, pole, a, a column. And all of a sudden he steps right in front of me and I see he's got a razor blade in his hand. Oh, my God. And he just steps right in front of me. And I pulled out that five dollar bill, put it in his hand and I go, no, es necesito. And I just ran into the store and. I, I told the management, I said, there's a thief out there. He's got a razor blade, lock the door. And th this store has had some robberies before, but uh, that car, my cargo pants saved my life. Now, he was probably not going to kill me, but when a man steps in front of you with a razor blade, you don't know what he's going to do. What he was probably going to do was try to steal my purse, but I wasn't, I didn't wear a purse. I, ha I had my money in my pants, in you know, pockets. But that specific five dollars I put in the right hand cargo pant, you know, pocket that's next to your knee. And I just spoke to him in Spanish. Do you know what the best razor for for men? <laughs> for robbing women or shaving? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's a scary story. I just wanted to cheer you up. Well, here it is. The word you mentioned at the beginning, the cheer you up, cheer up. Yes. See, it, uh, it stuck with me. Let me hear it. Cheer up. You said you're going to tell me a story about a razor that's going to cheer me up. No, I didn't. 
Okay, well, do you know there's a cereal called Cheerios made yeah. by Kellogg's? And, uh, you know, I, I think that I'm not sure what year it came out, but like, think of your eating breakfast. Like, I like warm cereal generally in the winter, oatmeal and stuff like that. In the summertime, sometimes I like a, a dry cereal. So I like Cheerios and Frosted Flakes and Raisin Bran. But just think you're sitting there pouring your cereal, and the name of the cereal is Cheerios. Cheerios is a British invention, no? I mean, the word sounds British, like Geronimo. Geronimo, yeah. sorry. Geronimo? I thought yeah. it was a submarine. No, Geronimo was, um, I think it was native, native American oh, no, uh, world. Or... India. Yeah. Yeah. I, somehow like, in British, yeah, it's, the name is still popular with British people. Uh, Geronimo? It seems to me, that, yeah. So when you hmm. go, when you go into parachute itself off of the plane, you you yell Geronimo and jump out. How do you like that? Wow. Hey, yeah, about Cheerios. The Cheerios is um, Cheerios is is the word when you say to somebody when you when you when you say goodbye, right? I don't know. I would say adios. I, mean, I live in Texas, and we cut off we quite often say adios, which just means I I turn you over to God, but. But I don't know. We have a few subscribers that are British, and uh, maybe they know. But, you know, some of the sayings that we think that countries say, maybe the, the, the average person doesn't even, doesn't even use it, like the word ciao. You know, if people in Italy yeah. would say ciao, or they would say it for hello or goodbye. And then I also heard that uh, in Vietnamese, I think it's Vietnamese, ciao bok means hello and goodbye, ciao, bok. But Cheerio, oh. like, I guess in the movies, you know, when we, we like watch a Poirot movie or Agatha Christie or something, you know, something about British life, we would see a fellow in a top hat and we would see someone with a cane and we would, we would hear, you know, people tipping their, see people tipping their hat, you know, Cheerio, my good man, Cheerio. But I don't know, I mean, You've been to London. Did you ever hear anybody say cheerio? I believe I did hear people said to me cheerio a number of times. Maybe that was a joke, but that's where I learned it. Cheerio? Uh, yeah. You mentioned mean Hercule that... Poirot. Yeah, I yeah. love Poirot. Hey, was it French? Said... Hercule Poirot, mais oui. Yeah, yeah. Hercule, the character of Hercule Poirot was an invention of Agatha Christie. So Agatha Christie is a mystery writer, and she created the character of Hercule Poirot. Yeah, he was a detective. I, uh, but I don't remember it. Uh, I have Netflix subscription, and there is a TV series, or maybe that was a... I don't remember... Was the Hercule Poirot or somebody else is just as famous uh, from well, Portugal, I, think, I guess? Well, I mean, I think some of it was based on the life of of uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. And, I mean, it's derived from someplace. But I liked, I don't know, about five, six years ago, there was a remake of the story, Murder on the Orient Express. So it, what it what it was? It was a modern version of the um, Agatha Christie. Oh, I did, I did, I did see it. That was I five loved years that ago. movie. Yeah, I loved that movie. The the steam was amazing, and and like the and it also takes place in some great train stations, and there's everyone's in a period costume, and mm -hmm. by the end of the trip, the the mystery is supposed to be solved. But what was so engaging about that movie was that. Uh, somebody actually invited wanted me to go with them to the movies and they wanted to know what I wanted to see. I said, well, I can't see anything too violent, you know, and I, I don't like, uh, I don't like, uh, you know, blood, you know, I don't like Blair Witch Project and I, I don't like this. So I explained to this person all the things I didn't like. He goes, well, what, what do you want to go see? What can you, what can you see? <laughs> I said, I like Disney films. No, I said, well, how about, you know, Murder on the Orient Express? So, we were going to meet there and I got there and, you know, I'm sitting in there and I've got my popcorn. I'm super happy. It's like plush velvet seats and it's like an afternoon matinee. I'm so happy in this really beautiful theater. 
And then the person texted me that, you know, he couldn't show up. It's like, okay, well, fine. I'm just going to watch a movie by myself. But but there's something really nice about watching a movie in a in a big screen theater. Hey, but, what, but I also have... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, what? why is it called Orient Express? Is it the train from London to, to Turkey, to Istanbul, which uh, I think yeah, they stopped it now, in... but... It... No, no, it's, they've, they've, they've got it again. The, the, it starts oh. off in... Uh, uh, in the in the name, I've actually been in that train station. It's called Haidar Pasha. Mm. So Haidar was one of the pashas or the rulers. It's a beautiful. Be- I mean, I haven't been there in like twenty years, but Haidar Pasha is like. Well, I mean, it's not like Russian train stations. Like those are the ultimate. But anyhow, um, you know, Haidar Pasha has like it has beautiful glass in the ceilings, and it has beautiful. St- um, iron work and you know it's just like an old 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 train station and they have started um they've started that that route again they've they've got some luxury cars you can get in and i i rode trains all over you know i rode them all over turkey but you know one of our subscribers mark stevens knows quite a bit about trains and i'd like to refer our subscribers back a couple years ago there's a whole episode on trains but where have you ridden trains? Have you ridden, ridden them in any other countries? Yes, I I was uh, I rode a train in uh, in the UK, in Germany, and that's in America, in the US. I mean, that's uh, that's all about <laughs> that's about it. But uh, speaking of Oriental Express, from like I can judge from what I've seen that it's basically. Uh, huge hotel and not a train uh, because it's very luxurious and I thought well if it's still in commission maybe I I would be able to book uh, a ticket or something in the future and uh, have a ride yes we can uh, can do an episode there Um, also weren't you telling me that you heard that they were doing like Dallas has a big ballet company, opera company, and you were telling me that you you saw that somewhere uh, the Bolshoi was doing a um, rendition of Anna Karenina as a ballet, and I'm just trying to think of like how would that be? Like all these people leaping and lunging and like flying across the stage. I mean, I I think of that novel as kind of like very grounded. Like you need a lot of steam rising from the stage and people tromping around in combat boots, but I guess artists interpret literature and life in their own way. And one of the great things about uh, looking up, uh, you know, you can look up and see what's going on, you know, in the month of May in Dallas or in Boston or in Austin. And, you know, there's all kinds of things going on in the spring. I mean, we've got this weekend coming up the Kentucky Derby. Um, sadly, I, I just read that three horses just died two days before the Kentucky Derby, which is this weekend, the, the 6th of May. And now there's uh, intrigue into why these three horses died. And also it's the coronation of the, you know, the King of England. So there's all kinds of, there's going to be derby watch parties. There's going to be, you know, the coronation watch parties. I mean, everyone will be all over Dallas looking up, wearing hats. And you know, you know, do you have anything special planned for the weekend? No, I never have any plans. <laughs> because you know, if you have, a, if if you don't have a plan, something else will happen. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>